There you go. So All we're right. with yeah, there you go. So we're with Brad. Um, he writes for Jelly Belly, powered by Kenda. Jelly Belly. Yep, Jelly Belly presented by Kenda. You got it. Perfect. And I just wanted to talk to him today. Um, he's checking in with us because he just completed the National Criterium Championship that his mm-hmm. friend, Ken Hansen, from Optum won in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So we just wanted to get a little feedback from Brad on the on his, how that race went down. Let's do it. Can you give us a little information on how it played mm-hmm. out? I mean, it looked like Optum had everybody lined up on the front and... Something tells me that if you had that type of support, you would have been the champion. So, so how did that how did that play out for you guys in that race? You know, it, I won't say that I didn't have support. I just didn't have uh, an eight man squad with six laps to go. Right. I had I had definitely one rider that rode like an eight man squad, being Jeremy Powers. Um. But then, you know, Optimum just did a great job. And uh, kind of just speaking on, about the race, you know, Ken to 5-Hour Energy, Thistle, and Optimum Health all did an amazing job as a team, uh, being unified, riding together, uh, taking control of the race at the key moments. Uh, and then in regards to Jelly Belly presented by Kenda, we had two guys that, you know, they're not their forte is not Criterium Racing. And we had them really focus on the first half of the race. And uh, those two riders did an amazing job, Minzo Dijon and Alex Hagman. You know, they helped sew things back together when a breakaway got off the road. Uh, kept myself out of danger um, by letting the group, group not get more than 10, sec- 10 seconds up the road. And uh, then in the last half of the race, you know, my the rest of my teammates really – Pulled together and did their best to help me and keep me out of uh, out of harm's way, uh, keep me in the draft. Uh, and then in the last five laps, kind of fast forwarding there, uh, well, it really got active with at least uh, about 20 laps to go. It really started heating up. Uh, attacks were going, and uh, you know, Bissell did a great job controlling 10 to 5 ener- hour energy uh, optimum. They all kind of took turns at times, leading out uh, their sprinters and trying to keep out of harm's way. And uh, that kind of worked great for us because I didn't have, you know, a full squad. I only had two sure. riders by my side. And How does that play out? I mean, you're when it, at what point when you're coming into that final lap are you like, oh, boy, I've got a whole train here of Optum. Now I've got to weed my way through here, get on somebody's wheel. How does that you know, play out in your mind? I mean, you know, sprinting that last hundred meters. I mean, is it you? You must be thinking, I've got to make a move. I've got to make a move. I've got to jump. I mean, what what goes on in your mind? In in my mind, I you know, I I do my best to always be moving forward. Uh, try not to get back more than you know twenty, let's say, because you know, inside five laps to go, moving up is really crucial. Uh, and it can take your finishing sprint out of your legs by trying to move up too many times or losing position. And, uh, you know, Jeremy Powers and Sean Mazik did a great job. Uh, Jeremy Powers took me up alongside the whatever lead-out train was at the front every lap for the last six laps. And, you know, that, that type of self-sacrifice um, was instrumental in getting me to the finish line. And, yeah, it looked pretty close at the end. Um, you know, you he know, just seemed to have a probably better position is all at the end of he, the day. He, but. he definitely had a better position. Uh, he had Alex Candelario uh, being his last lead-out man going through the final turns. And I was savvy enough and lucky enough to get right on Ken Hansen's wheel. And going into the final, final straightaway, um, I jumped left into the wind to try to get the jump on Ken. Meanwhile, Ken went through the slipstream of Candelario and then slingshotted from that. And uh, that gave him just enough momentum to really overtake me by the finish line. Uh, We were kind of neck and neck for, you know, a few meters. And then then he was able to carry his momentum to the finish line. And I was just happy that I was able to get second place 
Um, yeah, it was you know. awesome. I mean, the pictures looked awesome. I can't say I'm not sure what's going on with the cover coverage of these big races. You know, falling in, on Twitter just isn't the same. I looked all over for a live stream and really couldn't you know, you, find one. So yeah, you know, it's it's kind of frustrating. I mean, I understand USA Cycling has bigger bigger things on their mind with the Olympic road race going on uh, the same day that that the U.S. National Championship criterion was going on. But at the same time, you know, it's so important to the sport, though, Brad. Right. It's, 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 a, it's to bring it's these types of races up because I can't be in Grand Rapids, Michigan, but I want to be there in spirit and I want to be there watching what I yeah. can of the races because I am fans of your guys. I am fans of the sport and just finding yeah, out secondhand it. and stuff what happens is really tough. So I, I was a little yeah. bit disappointed too. I, I, I'm in the same situation as you and, you know, I really felt like they dropped the ball on that. Um, you know, that, and that takes away from Ken Hansen. You know, that's, this is like one of his biggest career wins and it, you know, it's kind of overshadowed by, overshadowed by the Olympics and the lack of, um, publicity that's, that's happened about it. You know, that's a huge win in a, in an American cyclist career because, I mean, we all know that America is criterium racing. And, you know, that's what we're known for. And to be a champion of the criterium discipline is, is huge, especially with the, with the, with the season that Ken's had, you know. Oh, it's, exactly. It's, and he's going to have awesome. to wear that, and he's going to want to wear that jersey proudly for USA exactly. and USA Cycling the whole, you know, remain, you know, next, all the way through next year. So it, it, it really, um, we really need to get a grip as a community in the cycling thing because that's what, you know... That's how you retain sponsors, and that's how you get new sponsors. Exactly. So, but anyway, enough said on that. I'm just glad I got to talk to you today, and I appreciate yeah. you checking in with CyclingIllustrated.com, and we'll always do our very best to try to cover all the races, and especially the bigger races. I know they're important to you guys and the whole cycling community. So, Right. Thank you very much for checking in, Brad. This is Brad Huff yeah. on CyclingIllustrated.com. Yeah, thank you very much.